that's right. I am sewing a garment today. I'm looking at my machine noticing that maybe it's not threaded quite right, but we'll see. So uh, today, um, this is kind of unexpected. I planned on making the Lisbon cardigan as a gift for my mom, um, but, and I really wanna do some gift sewing during some of these Vlogmases, but the fabrics I have are a little dark for all the Lisbons I plan on making. I plan on making two for me and two for her. I kind of splurged on this. Um, and these are fabrics actually, incidentally, that I didn't mention in my stash fabrics um, yesterday. And that's primarily because they're all like in my to-do bins. But I wanted to mention them because Style Maker Fabrics is a new company. Not new, they're not a new company, but I just ordered them from the first time. Like I've been aware of them and um, I'm super intrigued by them because they look like they really give you like the coordinating fabrics that match, you know, the matching ribs and things like that. So um, I'm not sponsored by any of these people, but I just thought I would share that because I'm super happy with this sweater knit that I got. It's very, very soft and it's very stretchy. And I just wanted some just simple cardigans, nothing flashy, things that are very, very useful and um, versatile in my wardrobe. And for me, I want them waist length because I've been making all these pants that are a little bit high waisted. So I think that this is a really great pattern for that. So I thought, that I would test one out on me. So I get to get something right now. Cause I, so I'm pretty happy about that. Um, and then maybe also my mom's up if I think that this is gonna work out. Uh, but those fabrics are a little darker. It's a dark green I got. I got a dark green, a navy, a black, and this maroon. So I know this is kind of dark, sorry. Maybe I'll brighten it up a little bit more. And you just never know what the lighting's gonna be like sometimes. So let's check it out. So um, I've already done, I've already cut it out obviously. And I already applied some interfacing to the center front button bands. Um, and I just used that fusible tri trico that I'm always talking about. That is meant for knits. And for the shoulders, I took a tiny little piece and I fused it on the back shoulders. And I just, I just trimmed a 3 8 inch wide piece to put on the shoulders to stabilize it. And that's the way, you know, like when you're hanging up your cardigans or when you're wearing them, the shoulders don't get stretched out. All right, let's, let's get to it. Let's see if I can sew this whole thing in the time it takes me to do a Vlogmas. So first I'm gonna do the shoulders and that's all these seams are pretty simple. Um, I think like my serger skills are okay. Oh, do I have a foot pedal? Yeah, I do have a foot pedal. Okay, good. I have three foot pedals down here but I also have wooden clogs on because you got you got to wear your holiday clogs when you got you guys want to see my holiday clogs I found these in a thrift store years and years ago they're wooden <laughs> they're very stiff I, I wear them all through the month because I really love them and they're very holiday-ish to me all right so we're gonna do right sides together so I feel like yes I've been surging for years, years and years. I don't feel like my surging skills are the greatest, you know? Um, I feel like there's been so many really great things that have come about in the home sewing world to help with serger techniques. So I'm sure I always get tips from people. This is sliding so much and it's because of the um, back is uh, interfaced. It's already really stabilizing it. I'm having trouble getting it to fit. Wow. love it when I start off on the on a struggle and you guys do too I know <laughs> all right so let's see here let's put this one on I had already loosened up my pressure foot my presser foot pressure because I just sewed a fleece sweatshirt look at look at see how this is just like bigger that's the interfacing and the interfacing really stabilized that shoulder so I'm just gonna lift up my presser foot a little bit and kind of ease it in every half inch or so. I imagine, I'm sure I'm gonna get this question, could I have put the interfacing on both shoulders? Yeah, I don't see any problem with that. Um, I will be really honest too, I hardly ever stabilize shoulders. One of the things I like using is that clear elastic. I haven't used it very many times. 
Um, I don't have any of it and that's why I'm not using it here. But it's not a very stretchy elastic. It's clear, but you just lay it there and just surge right over it. So you've probably seen it in ready to wear stuff. All right, so we have our shoulders. I stacked up all my pattern pieces in the order that we're sewing them, but where's the, oh, there it is. I was gonna say, I know there's a neck band in here. All right, so we're gonna put the neck band wrong sides together. And we're just gonna sew this. Let's, uh, let's put a few clips in this one. I don't use pins on my serger. I, I know that I'm pretty cavalier when it comes to a lot of sewing things. I don't mess around with pins in my serger. They have a tendency to sneak around and it's too expensive of a machine. Not to mention, even if you have the money to fix it, who wants to wait for it to get fixed? Because right now, who knows how long that would take, right? And uh, breaking a pin in your serger is not good. Okay, so I've got my fronts pinned. We're gonna find, oh, I could swear I marked the middle of this. I marked the shoulders. So let's find the middle. There may not have been a notch or I missed it. So let's see. I like those halfway points. So how is your Christmas sewing going? Someone said yesterday, you know, you ask us questions in these vlogmases and I run over to type in the chat, but there's no chat. <laughs> Sorry, it's a habit. <laughs> I like talking with you, finding out what you're up to. And uh, yeah, I know it's not live, is it? Whoops. All right, so we have a few pins there or clips. Let's put the shoulder, I'm gonna press the shoulder seams to the back. I just kind of had a heart attack that this is the wrong side. No, 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 okay, good, whew. Definitely a right and a wrong side to this fabric. And it is obvious, but it is dark. And I have a light off in here, which makes it even darker for me. It's a, probably lighter for you than it is for me. All right, let's get this. So uh, the things I'm worried about when I'm doing stuff like this, like a little neck band, is torquing. Um, I don't want one of these layers to slide and get misaligned. So if you have trouble with that, or maybe your machine bullies your fabric a little bit, you could you know, tack each of these little points on your machine. Just, just tack it, just a little three stitches right there in your side, your seam allowance. Um, and then you don't have to use any pins or clips and you know it has to match by the time it gets there. Um, there's really no getting around it that way. So, because as soon as I take this clip out, you know, it's the wild, wild west again. So, all right, so we're gonna get going. The serger doesn't naturally stop needle down, but it does have a little bit more pressure um, when you stop. All right, so when you're doing stuff like this, easing things that have to be stretched, make sure that you stretch, hold, then sew. Do not pull after you've started the motor, all right? All right, we're just gonna do these little, little sections. You don't need more pins unless you really want them. I find that sometimes more is a little too fiddly. I'm just making sure I get all three, I can see all three of the cut edges there. I know it's kind of dark for you guys, sorry. I'll brighten it up a little bit more after this seam. Make sure you see all three cut edges because you don't want on the right, because you know what happens if you miss the middle one, that's the one on the outside. I've missed that so many times, so I know. And nobody, nobody likes ripping out serger. I just finished a fleece sweatshirt. Uh, yesterday, no, day before yesterday. And I have to remove the sleeves and the waistband because they're just too tight. Um, and that's because the, um, the job was to make it just the video and they wanted the fabric to match. They wanted it to like match, match. And so I used the same fabric as requested. It's not stretchy enough. I even made it bigger uh, and it still just wasn't stretchy enough for me. I made the sleeves really short for me to meet for me to wear it and the waistband is just too tight it's a men's garment and so uh, you know I kind of thought that could happen but I was optimistic um, and my husband got it on it looked really good on him the sleeves are too short I'm just gonna replace his sleeves so I have to remove those but the waistband he couldn't get it off <laughs> I had to help him so yeah 
You definitely want a nice stretchy waistband. And you don't want to have to remove surging. All right, here we go. So some folks probably would like to uh, cover stitch this seam. You know, you could um, push it down and cover stitch it or top stitch it or something. I don't really feel like it needs it. It's nice. Let's uh, brighten it up a little bit more. You never know. I can't believe that we are like, what is it, like a week till Christmas? <laughs> let's go, let's go high drama. High drama! <laughs> The light under the serger is so bright and I can't turn that off. All right, so there we go. All right, so what's the next piece in this list here? Oh, it's my sleeves. I've run out of bins. <laughs> so I just have my pieces sitting here. Let's put the candy bowl. My candy bowl is looking very, very thin, you guys. These are growing on me. Uh, you know, if I think of a hot chocolate, they're fine. Um, I've been eating a lot of mandarins because our mandarin trees are just really great this year. All right, let's find a sleeve. This one here is the front or the left sleeve. So let's find the left side. There it is. Um, I usually set sleeves in. I'm not too worried about it with a knit um, and basically just for ease of the video, I'm gonna set it in flat, which you never see me do. But I'm just gonna put it in flat. And then we're going to just clip the center seam here, the shoulder seam, I mean, to the cap. Is there a notch? Ooh, I feel like there's a notch. Maybe I missed notching it. Oh, well, I won't worry about it. There's usually no easing when you're doing a, a set and sleeve that's a knit. So if you've ever like, like gotten frustrated sewing set in sleeves, sewing, yeah, sewing set in sleeves. And you're just like, I need to take a break from that. Yeah, Sarah me, I know you have a fantastic video. It doesn't work for me, um, but you still want the fit of a set in sleeve. Um, and cause you know, you hear me talk about them all the time. Um, don't be afraid of them on knits because there's generally nothing to ease. And even if there is, you can, you know, it's stretchy, right? So, and then just sewing a few set in sleeves that are knit will give you the kind of feeling of like how the um, sleeve and the cap integrate with the armhole as you sew. It kind of gives you the same feeling. And then someday, if you're interested in revisiting, easing a sleeve that's a woven, you'll probably be more accustomed to sewing those types of curves together. And you'll only have to worry about the easing part. Do you hear that noise? Hopefully nothing's vibrating. I have, it's a little cramped right here. All right, let's do the other side. I, I was like, this will be really fast to sew. And then I looked at all the pattern pieces. I was like, there's no way this takes all these pattern pieces. No, it, it has a lot of pattern pieces. It's got the center fronts, the back, the sleeves, and then you have all the finishing stuff for hems. You have the neck band, the cuffs, and the waistband, and the button band. I suppose you could do something like hem the sleeves instead of using a cuff, hem the bottom and not use a waistband. Uh, you could in some cases, you could hem the neck. You have to have a pretty good machine for that though. Um, and in some cases, I guess if you had a built-in button band, you could just fold it over. But this will be a really nice finish because, oh, see, there's my notch, look at that, see? I knew there was a notch. I just didn't get all layers. So this is the front, right? Let's see. Oh no, that's the, that's the back. This is the back. Okay, yeah, yeah, good, good, good. I'm in the right spot, okay. <laughs> but I think like getting a whole cardigan sewn in probably a half hour, that's not bad, right? Let's see. Oh, it's already been 15 minutes. I doubt I'm gonna make it a half hour. 
Maybe if I wasn't talking so much. <laughs> All right. You didn't see how inaccurate that was, all right? All right, so now we're gonna do the whole side seam. I'm gonna start from the hem of the shirt and go down toward the sleeve and press the seam allowance of the armhole towards the sleeve. If it's too thick, I'm going to also, uh, offset them um, just because, you know, no need to struggle with stuff like that. All right, just making sure everything, yep, that is the side seam. I never set in sleeves like this unless it's a uh, flat felled seam. So this would be another good one to tack with your machine first because it'll compress it a little bit and keep it lined up. I'm gonna pull it gently a little bit to kind of keep it feeding. Do you see it got a little bit hung up there? My machine's pretty good with thicknesses. Um, I made sure the cover stitch I bought was good with thicknesses, especially when it changes thicknesses. It's like, like seam transitions and things like that, right? Um, this one's pretty good. What is the rattle? I think it's this. I think it's that, okay. But it was, uh, it was having a little trouble with that fleece sweatshirt and it kept popping off this little thread guide. Okay, one more. And then we're going to put on, I think the um, hem band. This is pretty quick. I have a couple of little tricks I think you're gonna like when I get to some of these cuffs and things. Things I've learned from the garment industry and how they finish the um, seams at the ends of things like cuffs and um, especially for the button band because it's the last thing. It's usually whatever is sewn on last is the thing you gotta worry about. And sometimes you don't really want, you don't really want a, a, like a seam to go through a finished edge. I have to probably explain that. Um, I actually have a tiny little YouTube short and an Instagram reel about this and I'll show you what I mean because I think we're gonna encounter it with the button band. Um, and what that means is like, this is really common in underwear making because in underwear making, gently pull, there we go. Um, in underwear making, you often have one seam, like one leg that you have to leave open in order to put the waistband elastic on. Cause you put the, you, you keep the waistband flat or the waist flat, you don't do it in a circle. You put the elastic on and then you sew through that last side seam which completes one leg hole and the waistband. And that is a seam that goes all the way through to the finished edge, right? So that seam is going through the finished edge of the waistband and the leg hole. And when that happens, it can look a little untidy and it can also be a little painful. So I like to top stitch that down and I learned that in the garment industry. I didn't come up with that. All right. My, I'm noticing this slight wave in my seam, which means it's kind of stretching it out a little bit. All right, what's the next piece? Yep, it's the waistband. All right, so I'm just gonna put this wrong sides together. Okay, here is my, I hope this fits me good. It looks so small. <laughs> But I really like itch to stitch patterns. They're, they're one of the ones I really like. I don't make enough of them, to be fair. Okay, are there any notches? There are notches, okay, great. So let's just uh, clip our non-negotiable spots. It was funny, I was just about to sew this and I looked to see what I was sewing today because I got a bunch of things prepped 
all at once. Um, that's always what takes the longest when I do these is I do a bunch of prep as far as like I cut, I plan, I cut, I uh, make sure everything's ready to go, you know, obviously, so I don't have to like stop. And um, that takes me days <laughs> to prep a bunch of things and, and in between doing other things, right? Um, and the prep's kind of fun, but it's also a little bit like, okay, what am I going to do? Um, I, like, there's so many, with Vlogmas, there's so many days that I'm just like, I don't even know what day this is. And because my Vlogmas is one day off from the date, it's super confusing for me, you know? So I'm, like, on day 15, but the date is the 16th or something like that, you know? Um, I, th I think that's, yeah, exactly. And so, um... When I looked today, what I got to sew, I was like, oh, I get something. I got kind of excited. I was like, that means I'm going to end up with a sweater by the end of this today. That's exciting. All right. This is going to look so cute with my Mitchell trousers that I just made that I haven't even worn yet because I just don't have anything that goes with that waist. And I love them. I haven't even photographed my Merriam trousers because I'm I'm lowering the waist, the, the front waistband. I think I could wear this with the Merriam trousers, but I think that I would look straight up like a Gryffindor, you know, because <laughs> they're golden yellow. So. <laughs> Again, I'm just making sure I have all three layers. Um, this fabric, this sweater knit, it's so soft, by the way. Um, it isn't a, um, what do I want to say? I'm, I'm totally spacing the term I, I want to say that it doesn't curl. So that makes it easier to deal with because it's, so soft and stretchy and drapey that adds a layer of handling to this fabric that would make it really hard if it was also curling on me if you really love wearing knits and you want to sew them but you are really frustrated by that um, you're you're looking for knits that are ribbed or um uh, I think double faced is another, why am I forgetting this term right now? Cause I just don't, didn't think I'd need it. I guess. I don't know. Um, you, you want things that aren't going to curl. And if you don't know, just ask the fabric store for sure. Curling knits are just, they, nobody likes dealing with those. Um, and my tip with dealing with them is do not sew, do not cut them out unless you're ready to sew it within the next day because if you leave them in your bin for too long they just curl up like a neckband will look like a tube by the time you get back to it and you can't iron it out that makes it worse uh, so yeah in my videos when I'm showing certain things like how to sew a v-neck knit band some of those I interface with the Trico because it doesn't have to stretch very much. If it doesn't have to stretch very much. Um, if I were making my own shirt though, I wouldn't use that unless it was a bigger opening, but it does stabilize it really nicely. All right, so here's our waistband. Got a little sweater. All right, and so now we're to the button band and we're gonna sew across the ends. So we're gonna, um, you could do this on a regular machine too. We're just gonna, I see how I interfaced it, it's black. So I'm just gonna put this right sides together and we're gonna sew across all the short ends. I would like to sew more knits and I've actually purchased more recently, um, but I haven't got, had a chance. So this is my first one. All right. Cut them all 
small part. I'm not cutting right up to the edge. In fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna lock that like that. I I will admit I normally would just use my single needle machine. I think that that's more secure, unless you leave some threads and then pull them and lock them, uh, because you don't want this to come undone right there at that little point. You don't have to use a serger for this part, but if your machine doesn't like sewing stuff like this, then use your serger. That's fine too. I'm just going to leave that tail right in there. Cut it too short, then it'll just start, you know, creeping out a little bit. It'll be fine once it's turned and everything. Nothing's going to really mess around with that. All right. So this side has the interfacing, so we want that one towards the front. Look at that. Do you see how loose that side is? <laughs> Okay, maybe I'll tack this with my machine right here. Be kind to our future self. I'm gonna tack it in like two places. get rid of these threads so they don't peek out of my seam. My cheater threads. <laughs> Let's do this one too. So I kind of flop it over like at the center. This is the center right here. I, I make it match there and then distribute it everywhere else. All right, let's see. I mean, the good news is that the uh, side that goes towards the front, this interface side is super stable. So if I have a tuck, it's gonna be on this side and that's on the inside. So that's, I am always trying to reassure myself like, all right, what's the worst that can happen here? You know, um, what if I get a tuck, you know? What do we think about that, you know? All right, so we really want this to line up nice at the top here. And I'm gonna tack that with my machine as well. And that's a really weird perspective for the, the cameras. Oops. We really want a nice smooth transition going across the top, but that's not good enough for me, so I'm gonna take that out. I didn't backstitch precisely for this reason <laughs> because uh, this knit would run if I nicked it with my seam ripper because it is a true knit. That's why, um, you know, knits run. You cut one thread or yarn and then it runs just like nylons would. Let's trim this off. All right, so let's try that again. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pin this down here too. And I'm putting that interface side towards the right side of the garment. I wonder if it would be easier to do it from this side. It might be actually. Okay, let's try that. I'm just gonna smash it straight down right there. That's acceptable. Let's see about this one here. Oh, it's so dark for me. <laughs> I know you probably can't see anything. All right. <coughs> so I'm just tacking this right here at the top. So this is my neckline right here, right? We want it to be a nice smooth transition where this button band comes out. And you can already see it's already a little bit like kind of funny, right? It's winging out a little bit. That'll be okay though. 
Um, and then this is where I'm talking about when a seam goes straight through a finished edge like that. So this little seam right here, we're gonna have to definitely do something nice because otherwise you just have the serger tail, right? Sticking up there, um, a seam with at the bottom. All right, let's pre-tack our other side. This is our last seam, by the way. <laughs> this was really fast, I had 30 minutes in and I'm jabbering. That's a little bit extra interfacing right there, so we're not worried about that. It'll get trimmed off. You could also interface both sides of this. So I think in some cases that might be problematic, but for the most part, you're kind of fixed. If it's on one side, you know, it's fixed so you you might as well you know but um the um only drawback with that i think could be that it makes cer certain things too thick now the other thing to, to say is um i see instructions to interface knits things sometimes and the garment is intended for like a knit like like a polar fleece and you don't want to interface that that could potentially melt so just be careful. This isn't a hundred percent natural fiber, I don't think. Oof. Is it? I washed and dried it. <laughs> oh, that's way off. Look at that. Look at how way off that is. The machine just pushes it away. This is why we're pre-tacking to make the next step a lot easier. I just want to seam rip just the threads we just sewed. Get rid of those. And do it one more time. This is one of those things. It's just worth fussing with. I'm gonna get rid of all this. There we go. Do want to make sure I got got it twisted. Okay, here we go. Uh, I'm gonna try it from this side. The side is a fold and this one's a seam. So it's a little bit thinner and it doesn't want to move like the one with the seam. The seam is just really chunky. So it wants to move. I really want to come at it from this side too. So I'm trying to get it under there. I have very little space right there. And light. <laughs> Ooh, I backstitched, I'm committed. That one looked pretty good though. That was, that one really good. Okay, so let's do this one now. Last one, and then we can serge it. It was uh, interesting, I was looking at the directions for this to make sure I did it in the same order as the pattern. And uh, there's a whole section on doing Hong Kong finish on uh, your knit uh, cardigan. And I was like, ooh. That, that would be nice, right? A Hong Kong finish, if you don't know, is like basically binding seams. And um, I know someone said, it's binding miss on my channel. <laughs> and, I, and I take that, I know, I bind a lot of things. I like to bind. I don't make any apologies for it, except for I, I don't want it to be inaccessible to you guys. But um, I haven't really done a whole lot of binding finish on clothing, funnily enough. <laughs> So, and I've never, I don't, I think I did it once on knits and it was like a really long time ago. And I remember going, oh, this is kind of a struggle. It was for a client. Definitely not going to backstitch that one. Okay. That one. Okay. Though. All right. Phew. All right. Let's get rid of all these pins. Make sure we don't have any. And now let's serge these. I want these little tails. This would have been a good t uh, time to do my little trick where I, I start here and back up to the end, but I didn't want to put a back stitch in unless I knew I want this. So, all right, we're going to leave a tail as well. I'm not going to do any of my little experiments with finishing the, the serger tail today. Um, I did see this cool tool. Where was that? Shoot. I really wanted that thing. It was a flat. It wasn't this, I don't think it was this big. It's like a, it was like a needle and it had a flat 
um, piece of metal with a slot and it was for weaving in serger tails. I bet one of you's told me about it before. I sort of want to start from the bottom because you know, it's not up at the neck. <laughs> okay, let's do that. Let's get rid of all these threads. But I have been experimenting with like making a nice looking um, serger tail on things like this. But today I'm just gonna do something I know for sure will work. All right, and this is the side that's actually going to show on the inside. Hmm, yeah, that's okay, that's okay, that's okay. I'm overthinking. I'm procrastinating, that's what I'm doing. Okay, let's see if we can get this going. I'm gonna pull on this tail to kind of feed it on there, guide it. Because you know how sometimes it hesitates. All right, let's see. How's this look? Oh, that is, uh, I should have tacked that. <laughs> Shoot. All right. I'm still pulling this tail over here. Okay. Make sure we get all three layers. That interface layer is, it is stable. I don't know if I mean that in a good way or a bad way. Lift up your presser foot. I, this is one feature I love about this machine is I can lift up the presser foot like that instead of, you know, like you could do it all, all the way up, but sometimes you still want a little pressure on there. And this, that is a really handy tool. I really like that. This isn't like the fanciest serger. I had a much nicer serger before this one. And um, I like this one a lot. I think it's great. I still have my other one, I just don't have it set up. I feel like that got a little bit wiggly, but this is the inside that's facing up right now. I kinda wanna get my all out so I can feed it. Make sure that I'm getting all three layers. You don't wanna do all this work and then not get three layers, but look at this big bubble I have here. Eee. I don't want to get any torquing. I would even force a tuck if it got out of hand. But we're just going to keep easing this steady as you go. I have the pressure. I'll release more. We'll see. Don't want it to torque. Three layers, three layers, okay. This feels like it's making it tighter. I'm gonna go this way, see what happens. It seems the opposite of what it would be, but okay. Now, if you were doing this in a fabric that has an obvious pattern like um, grooves in the fabric, like like knit and pearl grooves, you know, or um, wide ribbing or some sort of texture. You don't, and it's vertical, you don't want that to look wiggly. So just be aware of something like that. Okay, I'm, I made it, barely. <laughs> That looks a little messy. Woo! Nice long tail. Ooh, that's some bad torquing. Ooh, that's not acceptable. Wow. Well, that one's gonna be coming off. Let's see if we can do the other one better. Hmm. Let's tack it. Let's be serious and tack it. Because we're taking that other one out. Oh, I can't lower that anymore. Okay, Ooh. thread cradles do not like cameras. All right, let's see here. So let's tack this a bunch of places. Can you see that a little bit? I can barely see. <laughs> what if we tacked the whole thing you know, and also putting this on the underside, I don't know if I can do it, but um, let's see. I need, I need, just need more, I really need more space. Oh, there we go. Okay, that worked, okay. So the feed dogs can help me ease this in if I put the looser side below. 
oh, I feel so much better at this machine already. So I'm gonna tack this in. Just because this is a knit doesn't mean you have to use your serger to sew it on. This isn't a seam that needs to stretch or anything, so. I have some nice flat bed, this is great. I'll, I'm gonna let that tuck happen. All the name of preventing torquing. <laughs> I have a lot of pressure on this machine too, so I can dial that up. What would I do differently next time? I think I would, would I interface both sides? Maybe I would not interface at all. Hmm. Buttons and buttonholes could be challenging if you don't interface though. So you have a couple little tucks there. Let's just even this up right now. But yeah, we still got a little bit of torquing, but definitely not as bad. Once this is overlocked and maybe top stitched down, I think this one maybe would be acceptable. I don't know. I don't know. I think I'm going to take out a little bit here and then just um, sew it from the opposite direction, just for a little bit. Look at the sewing drama in a, not in an, in a video that I'm not editing down. <laughs> Sometimes even the fast things, they are just fussy because of what they are. I won't spend too much time on this and then I'll show you my little trick so this video doesn't last for forever. A little nervous taking out some of these stitches. I thought this thread didn't match that great and uh, it's matching pretty good right now. I'm gonna get past like right, yeah, we're almost there. Okay, just about right there. Okay, we're just going to, see that already relaxed. Oh wait, it's this side we're trying to deal with. That's what I was thinking about, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's get this out and then we're gonna go the opposite direction this time to kind of counteract a little bit of this torquing. I don't want some of these threads to be there forever, so I'm just trying to grab them. But the sweater's a little heavy and it's sliding off my table right now. Ugh. Okay. Yeah, so let's, let's try and get that in there. Okay. I still have that looser side facing the feed dogs. Okay, that, that really helped that. So, you know, I think that that could be a really good strategy. If you pre-tack it and you go a little bit down and then turn it over, go a little bit up um, and just kind of do it in sections, you know, go down, up to there, down, up to there. I think that could be a really good strategy to preventing torquing like this. All right, so let's overlock this one and then I'm gonna show you my little tacking tri trick. Okay, so I'm gonna still overlock that loose side down, with it down, just in case it helps maybe a little bit more. And get rid of all these little threads. Yeah, I do have these little tucks, but I really think those aren't gonna show up very much. Which pedal is it? It's like bingo down there. Okay, pull my tail to keep this feeding. <laughs> it's literally Christmas time. We are past jump scares, Juki. Come on, Phoenix. All right. 
my, this is hanging off a little bit more. I'm gonna go by the placket width. I want the placket width to stay a nice width the whole way, right? This is so nice having it pre-tacked. Be kind to your future self and pre-tack. <laughs> Push your next seam down, by the way. A little tricky when we're coming at it like this. We're just gonna sew a little bit, ooch, and then poke it under there. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of some of these little threads right here. These are the kinds of threads that really plague you later on. Get them, push them in the seam allowance, make sure they're trimmed. All right. All right. That one looks way better. It's a little, you have, I have a little bit right there. I can handle that with, this is the buttonhole side. Okay, all right, so let me show you my little trick. So, first of all, we have these tails to deal with, right? This is the side I'm gonna keep, yeah, okay. So, I don't like these little threads right here. What are these doing? Yeah, we won't get rid of that. We will trim this. I'm not a big fan of that sticking up there. And so, um, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tuck this tail in the seam allowance back here and I'm gonna do it towards the body so that when the, the seam is pressed toward the body, it's tucked in there, all right? So that's the first thing we're gonna do. So we're just going to tack this serger tail in the seam allowance behind. And I pull it kinda taut and then I'm gonna trim it down just like this. All right. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I'm gonna get rid of this back stitch right here too. These little tiny threads, okay. So now you see this little point here. We're, we're gonna kind of push this down a little bit just to make it flush with that top edge. I see a little thread here. Let's check it out what it is. This is this type of stuff that really makes your stuff not look home sewn. All right, and now we're gonna top stitch this just for a, a second, like right here, maybe just in the neck band right here, all right? And so now if you are, say you're doing like children's clothes, right? And you have, um, oh, we haven't put the cuffs on. Um, and you're doing a cuff on a children's shirt and that little sleeve is like this big around. <laughs> It's really hard to put a cuff on a circumference that small. And so that's a perfect opportunity where you would put the cuff on when the sleeve is flat and the underarm seam isn't sewn yet. And then that means you'd have that seam going right through the wrist, right? And this is another opportunity to kind of mash that seam allowance down. It makes it more comfortable and it uh, reinforces it and it makes it last a lot longer and it looks nicer. So I'm gonna do this from the right side, but I'm gonna push this down a little bit just kind of gently folding, folding, folding. Just kind of repeatedly kind of getting it in there best I can. You could also hand sew it, I guess, if you want. And then we're just gonna stitch right here in this neck band, making that seam allowance stay there. Just like that. And I could probably do a little better. Maybe I would do a few stitches in there. And then make sure you get rid of any back stitches, just like that. And then it makes it nice and flush and clean at the top. Looks a lot more like a ready wear. All right, so let's do this one too. This one's gonna go way better because this was our starting one. All right. And then again, I'm really careful. I get rid of all these little threads. Those, those are the things that really make your stuff look kind of raggedy when it's not. You just hand sewed, you just hand made it, right? And so now you can see this thing, this crept up a little bit. See that? So we're gonna just kind of loosen it up with the awl. Just like this, and I can pull that down to kind of make it look a little bit more even. I do that especially on underwear sewing because those 
elastics are really hard to finagle. If you want to do the whole waistband, you can. If you just feel like that'll be look more natural. But see, there you go. And it just looks more ready to wearish. This one looks a little better since we started at this end. There we go, like that. Just like that. All right, so let's do one cuff. I'll do one cuff and then we'll do our letter to Santa. And then I'll be seam ripping after this because <laughs> I'm going home with one of this thing. <laughs> All right. So we're gonna do our end of our cuff first. Hold it wrong sides together. Now sometimes I kind of waffle with like, you know, flip flopping these seam allowances. I will say it's noticeable. It's noticeable at the fold down here where your hand comes out. Um, but if you have to, cause it's just so thick there, uh, it's, it's fine, just do it. <laughs> um, the other thing you could do, sometimes people will split this, they'll cut it right here. And what I would do is I would just reinforce the seam and then cut up to that seam there. And then you can fl flip the seam allowances back. One going one way, one going the other way. All right, so this, I'm going to push the seam allowances going one direction. Hopefully they'll stay. I'm gonna tack it with my machine, but I'm gonna pu put it the opposite on the sleeve. So I'm gonna make the sleeve go the other direction. And the, the great thing about doing that too is that it'll make this seam right here line up a lot easier to the underarm. All right, so let's find a sleeve here. All right, and we want our sleeve inside out. And we want, this is the, this is the back, so this is the, we're gonna put the seam allowance of the sleeve toward the back, all right? And we want this seam allowance to go toward the front. So let's flip this around and stick it in there. And so this seam allowance is going the other direction, right? And we're gonna put our cuff inside there. And then, oh, it's dark. And then we're gonna nestle those seam allowances. And they kinda of wanna just lock into each other because they're going the opposite way. Make all these threads go. I cannot see, it's so dark. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I'm gonna tack it with my machine really quick too. Since it's so dark. All right. And then you could double check it right now and say, oh, look at that. My seam already matches really nicely. All right, so now we're gonna put this on. And like I said, I always do this from the inside. So my sleeve is inside out, my cuff is inside. All right. And I kind of just go like this, I kind of boop, 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 like that. And it kind of evenly distributes it. And I'm gonna start just behind this seam. I'm not gonna start right on top of it. My machine would be really mad at me for doing that. So we're just gonna start right behind it, kind of get our sewing legs under us as we approach it. And then we're gonna, I might have to pull, oops, little seam allowance. It's like a little, like a hiccup. <laughs> Make sure you get all three layers. You don't want one to be shy of that seam. Just, it's very easy to ease this one. There's not, it's not a huge amount to stretch. All right, get that tail out of the way. And then as I approach it, I'm gonna try and line up my blade just to the right of these and not trim any of those previously sewn threads. Like this, I kinda always try and go off at an angle really quick. And then now I'm going to tack this on the inside of the sleeve side just like we did at the center front there, like that. There we go. There we go. And we're gonna trim those nice and low. 
There we go. Ooh, I can't wait to try this. Let's see it. I have to take that one neck band or one button band off though. Ugh. I might use little pearl buttons on. Eh. Pearl buttons? I don't know. Maybe not. <laughs> we'll see. Let's see if we can. Cute. This doesn't look as bad as I remember right here. You know, I wonder if I could make that work. Maybe. Let me hold it. I'll hold it up for you. Oh, can you even see that? <laughs> I feel like that button band up there, it looks a little stiff. So dark in here, huh? <laughs> All right, let's write our letter to Santa. You've been here long enough. As Ray calls it, the antler cam. <laughs> All right. Oh. Okay. All right. The other day, someone um, wrote a really nice comment and said, Dear Santa, um, that they really hope to meet in real life sewing friends. And I totally agree with that one. So am I hitting the, yeah. <laughs> Dear Santa, someday we'd all like to meet in real life. I mean, this is real life, whoops. I'm running out. Oh, no. This is real life, okay? Like, just because you and I aren't in the same room, I still feel really connected to so many of you that I've I've talked with and, and commented with, even people I don't even know your real name. So, for me, this is real, and I, I take it seriously. So, I know I can be a little bit of a Pollyanna about that stuff and um, really cliche. Trust me, things drive me crazy about doing this, too. Like but not you guys. Um, there's a few of you that drive me crazy. Yeah, we know those people. <laughs> but all in all, like, this has been an incredible experience. And I set out in my area to make sewing friends by kind of trying to become part of the quilting community. And I did make, make meet a few people. I haven't kept up with that, to be honest. But And um, I didn't expect this to turn into a community. I really just wanted to help other people sewing when I started live streaming. I still had my factory and it was doing really good. Um, and uh, because of that fire and because, you know, everybody around me lost everything, I had to close my business. Um, I didn't lose anything in the fire, but everyone else did. And that affected me in other ways. And when I started live streaming, I wanted to help especially other manufacturers or people trying to sew as a living um, and just people sewing in general, just, I didn't, I got occasionally people asking me sewing questions and I just wanted to help. That's all. And I didn't know what to do after closing my business. I was very like, whoa, I was a million percent committed to that and loved it. And it was a huge, it was my life besides my family. Um, so I just kept streaming cause I needed something to do. I'm one of those people that has to be busy 20 hours of the day. And, uh, and I'm really thrilled with that, the fact that this can turn into a community because I really believe in that. So, um, you're all here to me. So obviously I'm sitting here in a room by myself talking as Shem likes to put it like, I can't believe you're just sitting there talking by yourself, but it doesn't feel that way to me. <laughs> so, um, or, um, I hope some of us Hitting, is it really hitting the camera? Is it bumping the camera? <laughs> okay, I hit, I feel it. Hope some of us can meet some sewing friends. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Love Sarah me and all of us here. 
All right, thanks for hanging out. I know it was a long one today. Um, hour, oh my goodness. I, bye. <laughs> I need a piece of candy, bye.